Hi, Dad. Hi, Sam. Um, you ready to test another amp? Yeah, let's do it. All right. Little DB, he wants to test an amp, too. I yeah. can hear him barking. Well, Deathbiter DB. Uh, I mean, oh, my goodness, Deathbiter 2000. <laughs> um, let's see. I've got a... So we went and did some other videos where we mm. tested the old Crest with the conventional um, From about transformer the power supply app. And we tested lab group in um, 90s. About 90s, yeah, 10s. Yeah, we'll call it a 90s. Um, lab group in 6400. And then um, we'll fast forward up um, to this decade. This is uh, our last decade, the 2000. Sam's um, four or five years old at the most. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a PowerSoft X4. It's rated at 5,000 watts per channel. Okay. Times four. Okay. Um, 20,000 watts in a single rack space. Now, that's a How pretty big step from this thing. Yeah. It's about 1,000 watts in two rack spaces. Uh-huh. Got it. Okay. Okay. So this is about 500 watts per rack space, and this is... 5,000 watts per rack space. 20,000 watts. 20,000 rack. Okay. All right. Yeah, big jump. Yeah, and we had these ones on our last warp tour. Uh-huh. And the weight is less. So they yeah. weigh less, and they put out more. Yeah. Like... Um, <laughs> So these things are really advanced. I mean, they've mm -hmm. got all kinds of software. Now, I've got this thing bypassed all the way through. It's just uh, it's turned into as straight of an amp as I could get to. You can't bypass everything, but I, there is no limiters. Uh, it's just okay. straight gain. Change it into a conventional amp. Got it. Um, not unlike the lab group. And channel one has got a ground as one okay. minus and hot on one plus. And then two plus is also a ground. And two minus yeah. is a negative hot. Is that like a common thing for amps now, just in general, or is it just like a certain subset of amps? There seems to be three trains of thought. One train of thought, or three different, and there's reasons for doing the various ones. The old amps are all ground is ground, and then hot is hot, and yeah. it's times two. You mm -hmm. just got to, um, and all the older amps are that way, or most yeah. all the other ones I've dealt with. Then we've got these amps that are, where they're using the differential drive. It's almost like a balanced line where you've mm -hmm. got one plus is, is a positive signal, two plus is a ground, and one minus is a ground, and then two minus is a negative signal. And that's kind of like an XLR. Yeah. yeah. Like, like this would be uh, channel one plus would be like pin two. Okay, yeah. Channel two minus is mm -hmm. pin three. Mm -hmm. And one minus and two plus are, are the, pin one yeah okay yeah. so it's got so you've got the differential drive the beauty of it is it's automatically in a bridge mono mode and it uses power more efficiently so if mm. you put the exact same thing onto channel one and two one of them's drawing off the negative supply while one's drawing off the positive supply it uses the input power more efficiently so you can got get a little it. bit more power out of the amp okay based on the wall voltage you got know it. for a given amount of power in a little more efficient so um, I forgot what's going with that. Okay, so we. <laughs> that's okay. Um, we, oh, then there's a third. Yeah. There's a third one too, which we're gonna get into with the next amp, which um, I don't think we'll do a video. I'll do one for the member mm -hmm. side, um, where both sides are hot. There is no grounds on the output. Okay. What's the benefit of that? It's a, It's basically. Even more efficient, totally balanced okay. power. Everything is equal and opposite. The voltages are lower. Here, if you put mm. out 100 volts, it'd be ground and 100 volts on the plus. Yeah. And then ground and negative 100 volts yeah. on the minus. Well, on a differential drive, it'd just be plus minus 50. Yeah, okay. So there's lower voltages involved yet the differential between them is the same. Yeah. And then all channels can be the same. It's um, it's like every channel is its own bridge mono. Okay. Um, interesting. And uh, yeah, it's interesting. interesting. So we'll look at okay. that next, but not... Uh, but I we'll won't do, yeah, yeah, we'll do that. <laughs> okay, so in any case, uh, we've got our setup here, which allows us to listen to the distortion and listen to the difference mm -hmm. between the two channels. So we'll send the same exact signal into both channels at slightly different levels. Mm -hmm. We're gonna send it a little bit hotter into channel one and a little lower into channel two. And then we're gonna to listen to it. We have a speaker hooked up to channel one and channel two in the exact reverse. So if we send 6 dB hot to channel one, we'll send 6 dB hot to channel one 
and it'll cancel perfectly yeah. because we're going to listen to 6 dB too quiet on channel one. Mm -hmm. uh, I hope I made sense there. If you're confused, go watch the other videos. We yeah, explain it a lot better, and this is the third in a series. So. Okay, perfect. So well, let's um, start with a tone, and we're at 230. And we got four different uh, channels. We got the tone, we got the pulse, we got the song, and we have the pink noise. Yes. So there's a tone, and then... Bring it up to cancel. Yeah, so we're trying to cancel these out. We're sent, trying to send the exact same. So now we're sending a ton of load. Yes, in fact, if we look, you can hear the amp fair. Yeah. Oh, interesting though, yeah, okay. Okay, now, the amp's fired up. Now we're looking at here, we've got voltages of 100 and 50 volts mm. we're running a, that yellow line is 150 volt output so it's it's um it's running pretty loud there's there's almost there's 200 volts there's 250 <laughs> volts so 250 volts and we're still okay yeah and we're not seeing a lot of difference now this one remember on the other amp so as we turned it up we started to hear a crackling yeah. or a farting or distortion yeah watch what happens on this one just gets louder now watch I can rebound yeah the okay so that's just oh but we hear the no it's just that that's the um that was a fader that wasn't a real thing oh but I mean I can hear the amp fans yes. so he's working hard yeah is this green light telling us that we're yeah we're hot? Right at li we're, the limiter's kicking in so we're, but we're not getting anything that's really well, loud that would be adding to the mix one 270 volts. <laughs> the amps fans are louder than the distortion right now. So we're really hitting this thing hard. We've got um, one 250, 60, 260 or 70 volts coming out of this thing. Which is way more than we could have sent with the other amps. Oh yeah, and it's got a lot more power to it. And, and we're it's not very hearing quiet. Anything. But look how off the faders are. Yeah, what's up now, with what that? Now what happens if I turn it down? Oh. So no matter what I do, I can't get the app to distort. I can't get it to do that farting sound. Uh -huh. Yeah. This thing's got built-in limiters that we don't have access to. Mm. So it's basically saying, no matter what you do to me, you're not gonna. You're not. I'm not gonna sound. I'm bad. not gonna end any. Send I'll any turn it down, notes. but I won't fart and, and snort and burp and, <laughs> and uh, make all kinds of bad sounds. So it's fully protected. Yeah. And this is outside of the limiters that we set. This is an addition where the yeah. other amps were able to clip them. Now that may or may not be a good thing, depending on yeah. what your purpose is. Maybe you want full control and you want to set your external limiters. Maybe these limiters come in a little early. But on the other hand, that fact you're that not you going to send any like stinky noises into the mix. It's not going to sound bad if you beat it up. Yeah. Mm, interesting. Um, well, at least with a tone. Uh, let's check yeah. the tone here with the frequency. Let's see if we can hear the AC. Oh yeah. So in one of the last videos we were looking at, the uh, crest amp would oscillate when we got to a certain. Um, yeah, you could tone. hear the. It wasn't oscillating, but it, you could hear the power supply yeah. ripple interfering with these. So we looked at that on the other amp and now we're looking at it on this one. So we're at about 57 hertz right so now. So here we would hear that like woo yeah. woo woo. So we're not having any no. power supply ripple coming through. It's really nice, okay? Yeah. Now? Nothing you'd be super upset about hearing. Except for the fan. <laughs> yeah, fans are loud. Definitely don't want this in, a, uh, in the room you're recording. Uh, let's go into a different yeah. signal. Um, it's okay, buddy. <laughs> now, that the fans are loud here because it's so sh small of an amp. It has mm. tiny little fans that go fast, whereas these have bigger fans that go slow. They don't have to it's be one of the loud. downsides of having a single rack space amp. Uh, so let's get this going. There's a pulse. So 
But we see that, that light means it's clipping, yeah. or as close to clipping as it'll get. So, and he doesn't have a lot of high frequency, so it's a, no. again, the limiting is grabbing it pretty well. Yeah. It's just crunching down. Oh, there's nothing, let's try uh, music. So I'll set up for a null at low volume. So now we're in the linear. Okay, so we're canceled pretty good. Yeah. So we're in the linear range. And we're starting to clip. Yeah, we're starting to hit the limiter. Or the limiter. Yeah. And then it sounds at the opposite of a limiter. Yeah. So if you ever wondered what a compressor sounds like, yeah. this is the opposite. Yeah. This is what a compressor is doing to the signal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's funky. But it's still not ugly at the other ones we are hearing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's really neat. It's really, yeah. I'm really quite impressed with mm -hmm. the um, power. The, uh, the um, yeah. I'm yeah. I'm impressed with the sound quality of this coming out. How does it handle pink noise? Because we had some weird stuff in the last one. Ah. Okay. So it does have. It pink. has a crackle with the pink noise. Yes. Now that I'm guessing. Let's investigate that. I'll yeah. bet you that has to do with the same thing with that high VLF, v mm. VHF, v high frequency clip that happened in the yeah. lab group in, is that switch mode power supply does not like a lot of high frequency mm. energy. So let's go ahead and Send bring a high up a frequency tone. tone. Yes, let's go up to a high tone. Let's go up to this. Yeah, because the pink noise was our biggest issue on the last one as well. There, there's 20K, there's 6K. Let's get a good cancellation here. Ooh, it's hard to cancel. Which might be an, could that be a possible issue as to why we're getting such weirdness with the pink noise as mm -hmm. well? Um, or no? Could be, yeah, I'm not sure about that. Let's, now we're at 12K, 20, yeah, 12K. Hey, that's awful. Hate to hear it. <laughs> okay, now we're at, now at 20k, the fan He's is going nuts. He's freaking out. I wonder if the dogs are just... We're hearing some distortion. Some cracklies. I just don't hear it. You don't hear the distortion? Yeah, I hear that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah there it is. It's been doing that. Yeah. Oh. Okay, that's painful. Um, so in any case, <laughs> I think the pink noise so that's is a better. So that's at 17, uh, K, by the way. Yeah, 18 K. Yeah, 18K. that's um. So I think that um. The pink noise is a good indicator. There is some high frequency differentials yeah. that show up as a distortion that are probably getting past the limit. Getting past, okay, yeah. So I'll bet you the pink noise is sending these high frequency peaks that are getting past the attack mm -hmm. time of the limiter. Um, but overall, it really handled signal overload. Yeah, I mean, we were seeing that, like, we were seeing that, but worse on every other channel with, our, with the other amps anyways. So like, uh, in yeah, terms yeah. of like the distortion. Yeah, so they've come a long way with yeah. this, um, uh, yeah, with the amp technology. Yeah, that's think, crazy. Um, all right, I'll get more in depth on the member side with this stuff. But the uh, this is fun, and thank <laughs> you for joining me. Let's yeah. See I, the other thing I was doing, let's see if we can do it really quick, was setting up a null. And then sweeping down and seeing how well it would hold the null. Mm. Really hard to tune these up. Yeah. So it's holding it. It's pretty yeah. consistent. So what you really don't want to have, since one channel is driven harder than the other, you don't yeah. want it to get louder and softer. Because then. Because that would mean there's a non-linearity. Yeah. Wow. It's not sustained. Let's try that. <laughs> All right. 
Mark's working hard. Really? So I am able to, by altering the volume level, level with uh, a, a sine wave, I'm able to cancel it out at many different levels. I just yeah. have to change it to compensate for mm -hmm. the limiter that's turning it down. With the pulse, it gets through because the limiter is changing the yeah. volume. So you can either cancel out the loud part, the high, the peak, yeah. or you can cancel out the quieter pump that follows mm -hmm. the click. And it, you, it's hard to do both. You can't do both, yeah. but because the limiter is changing the dimensions mm -hmm. of the of the pulse. Yeah, that makes sense. And there's two. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, cool. In any case, so it's not letting the bad sounds through, yeah. and they're using itself to cancel it out. So it's uh, which it. sounds like a, something you would want to do if you're distorting and going into the mix. Yeah, definitely um, quite surprisingly um, uh, mm -hmm. resilient. Yeah. Cool. Um, thank you, Sam. Thanks, Dad. Uh, until next time. Next time I visit down here. <laughs> yeah, we'll do more then. Yeah, sounds okay. good.